Igor Antonov is the heart of Noshlezhka, a Russian charity that looks after some of society's most vulnerable. Night after night, he takes his van out onto the streets of St. Petersburg, distributing meals to the city's homeless. They include everyone from former prisoners to university graduates. Life on the streets is very hard, especially in winter. The work is also challenging and brings Igor Antonov to his limits. Will he manage to help everyone in need tonight? Forty liters of chicken soup have just been prepared here at a cafe. Igor Antonov just needs to pick it up. The cafe is the first stop on his rounds. These aren't just leftovers, and that's important. The soup was prepared for our homeless people. That's in line with our principles and those of our sponsors. We treat homeless people like all other people, just like everyone else. That's why we pay attention to the quality of the food. The food distributed by the charity is donated by cafes, restaurants and canteens across St. Petersburg. Antonov's meager wage is also financed by donations. On his nightly journey through the city, the former marine officer does more than distribute meals. He's also a social worker of sorts. Every night, he's accompanied by volunteers who assist him in his work. It's hard to say no and set limits. You want to follow your heart and give everything you have to people who need help. But that's impossible. I'm a professional, and I can't end up burnt out after my first stop. Then I'd have nothing left for the people who come afterwards, other than empty thermoses. They're in the southern part of the city. The van has a set route and a fixed timetable. For Antonov, sticking to the schedule is important. We've survived. God only knows how we've survived. We survived thanks to their help. Spring is on the way, and then everything will be all right again, God willing. God bless you and yours. Most of the homeless here know Antonov personally, like Natasha. She says that her husband, an alcoholic, threw her out of their apartment. She ended up on the streets and lost her job. Now she's living in a cellar. The worst part of life on the streets is the cold and the hunger. It's warm sitting here. Thanks to the Nokleshka workers, I don't have to starve. Igor helps us and brings us warm clothes. Last week they set up tents for us to sleep in, but I'd rather not sleep there. You have to be there at 8 p.m., and that's next to impossible. We're on the move every day from morning to night. Antonov is on his way to the overnight camp. Noshlezhka set up the tent and it's heated. Anyone can stay the night here, even if they don't have a valid ID. And not many homeless people do. Comparable state-run shelters usually require ID. There are many bureaucratic hurdles when it comes to obtaining help from the state. 
сутки. Ну да, у меня открытый перелом, здесь вот рано. I have an open fracture. The wound is really big. It's infected and I need medicine. But I've only had enough salve to use twice. The cast isn't enough. He has a bad break and a very serious wound. But he wasn't admitted to the hospital. I'm not a doctor, of course, but my experience says that he'd be in the hospital now if he were properly registered with the city. Family disputes and financial hardship are the most common reasons for homelessness in Russia. According to estimates, more than 60,000 people in St. Petersburg live on the streets. I have something to eat first. I always come here. I'm very happy to see you. Antonov often hears stories like the one Natalia tells him. Natalia has been living in a cellar. A group of teens recently discovered her there and assaulted her. They beat me up. I was half dead. Then my cat came to me. I call her Gosha, and she lives with me. I woke up and my head was covered in blood. My blanket was singed. I was woken by my cat, who poured at me. I managed to get out, thanks to my cat. For the homeless, turning to the police for help isn't an option. God, give me strength. And my friends here? But we're your enemy. We three stick together. Here's a sandwich, but don't hit anyone with it. The three men impress Antonov with their sense of humor and determination. I'm afraid of turning into a robot, an automaton. Someone who hasn't got enough humanity to give anything to others. I don't want to be a manager, a bureaucrat who just says, next please, all the time. That's something I'm really afraid of. Antonov says that winter is the worst time for the city's homeless. Many buildings are inaccessible, and the police chase homeless people away from public areas. Without assistance, most homeless people will fall sick or even die. Once a week, a doctor accompanies Antonov on his rounds. On other evenings, he tries to give first aid as best he can. Take it. Igor, please give me two paracetamol. We're not going to negotiate here. I'll give you one paracetamol and one other tablet. Is it for a headache? Yeah, it'll help with your headache and other cold symptoms, too. Russia is in an economic crisis. More and more often, pensioners are turning up for meals. And so are others who may have a job and apartment, but are still struggling. The fact that I'm forced to ask for help from charities is a crisis for me. I have a job, but I haven't been paid in three months. That's why I'm forced to live like this. What am I saying? To try and survive like this. The idea that you can tell who is homeless and who isn't is a myth, Antonov says. There's a lot of prejudice and stigma associated with homelessness. My mother once saw a report about our organization on TV. When I visited her, she said to me, Igor, I saw something about you on TV. Decent people, well-dressed people come to you for help. Are they students, maybe? I said to her, Mama, show me what you mean. And she did. 
I told her, this fellow here is named Slava, he's been homeless for 10 years. He lives in a cellar. My family is also prejudiced when it comes to homeless people. That's why at first I didn't tell them about my volunteer work. They worry about me. They think that homeless people are aggressive and that it's their own fault they're living on the streets. Antonov and his volunteers say they aren't sure whether Russia's economic crisis, the decline of the ruble and the sinking oil prices, have led to more homelessness. But they do whatever they can for anyone who comes to them for help and a warm meal. It's been a good night. They've managed to feed everyone who needed food. Antonov is happy about that. I couldn't work in a factory tightening screws all day. Of course, some people like that kind of work, but not me. I prefer it when everything around me is whirling around, exploding in motion, and when I have logistical challenges to overcome. That's what I like. Tomorrow evening, Igor Antonov and his volunteers will head back out again and do the best they can to help everyone who needs it.